Hi y'all. I just thought I would update you. I have been working a little bit with adding some interest to this background before I start doing the trees and I thought you might want to see it. So I thought I would turn on the camera and start recording. So what I am doing is I am doing, using a little bit of, st uh, of stenciling to create a little bit of interest in the form of sort of a light mist. So I'm using sea glass and a Color Shift Acrylic Paint. Let's see if you can see that. There you go. It's by Folk Art. I really like it. It has a very subtle color shift tendency. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I wanted to, I wanted to add mist to this before I put in the trees, but I didn't necessarily... There. There you go. There's the end result. I didn't necessarily... You see that? I didn't necessarily just want to stipple it or make it, you know, add mist in some other way. I wanted a very subtle, soft way of adding kind of interest to in an, in an enchanted forest kind of way. So I put some pixie spray on my favorite stencil. And I decided to use it, although it doesn't seem like I have enough pixie spray. <laughs> cool. There we go. All right, we'll get that back on there and we'll start working. So I've done, I've mixed some of the, um, some of the color shift with a little tiny bit of the sea glass. And I really just want to create it. I really just wanted to create something subtle here. Um, just to go in the background, I want there to be like kind of a enchanted mist. And to me, an enchanted mist isn't just something that is just mist. It's something that has color and interest. These color shift paints by Folk Art, they, uh, they subtly shift tone whenever light hits them differently. Um, I really like the way that they work with chalk paint because it doesn't, it doesn't change the color shiftiness of them. And it adds a, an element of dimension. Now you'll notice I'm not doing everything the same. I'm changing things up just a bit. This is a technique that I actually learned from Sally Jo from Woody Bend, um, one of her live videos. She was creating this amazing piece and she did a technique very similar to this using uh, some of the Dixie Bell Metallics and I kind of fell in love with it. So I kind of changed it and adopted it and made it a little bit my own, but I did, I was inspired by Sally Jo. If I can find the link to it, I will link it below when I post this. Uh, I don't know if she has released them as YouTube videos or if they are just on Facebook, however. So yeah. And the brush I'm using is just a very simple craft brush. I think it's, um, I think I got it from Michael's. I, I use this for stenciling a lot. It's got a very nice flat bottom, which means that you can put just a little bit of your paint on there and get a nice flat surface. And it's light and delicate and easy to hold for a long time so that you can create the look that you're going for. All right. Now I'm going to add a tiny little bit of some blues and purples in there. Um, also the color shift paint. Let's see, here's the blue I'm going to use. Just adding a tiny bit in there. It kind of has a blue and purple interference kind of tone. I think it'll look really nice with this particularly in low light like when this is going in my client's bedroom one assumes because it's going to be a jewelry box so low light will be a will be something that I like to think about that like when I'm making a piece and I know it's going in a specific room I like to think about the kind of lighting that is going to be in that room and I like to make little details like this little little subtle subtle details that in main light you might not even see but in low light it'll flash this really really pretty pretty colors. I'm also going to use it to soften a little bit of this sea glass so it comes out with 
kind of a mistiness that, that looks really, really nice. Okay, so I'm using that. All right, now let's see how that looks, shall we? Ready for the reveal? The reveal is always my favorite part. There. See? All right. And this is just one way that I add like dimension and interest. So I know that the bottom part of this is going to be, you know, brush and et cetera. But I do want to, I just want to add subtle dimension and interest to this because I really, really want this piece. I really want it to have everything. Like I really want it to have, I really want it to be a beautiful piece of layered art. And Adding things like this in the background is going to make that happen for me. I like to do multi-layer things that have a lot of detail. And adding adding this kind of thing is going to help with that a significant amount. So I'm just going to finish this up. Maybe I'll speed this part through and show you the reveal at the end. Okay. Oh, one thing that I am doing, uh, so I can't, I can't speed it up since I'm talking. I'm making sure that the light parts are kind of, see, look how the light parts that comes in through the light. Like, I'm actually considering that. I'm considering that my light source is here, okay? And so I'm making the lightest parts of this, the top parts, and that come from the side. That is one way to make sure that you have a cohesive feel to any art piece. Know where your light source is. So especially if you're hand painting, know where your light source is because that is pretty much the best way to make things realistic. Like without knowing, you know, if you don't know where your light source is and you start trying to painting things with different colors of light and dark, they're not going to have a cohesive feel. It's just going to look like a bunch of mush. Like I, one thing that kind of bothers me about blending, like traditional furniture painting blending, is that, that people will blend like in drawers, which might be how it works. But if I were to blend this, I would make sure that this part was darker and this part was lighter and this part was lighter because there would be a shadow here if the light was coming from above. So it's just something to keep in mind. Keep in mind your light source. Think about when you're painting, you have to think about your light sources quite a bit. Sorry, I'm kind of a little bit scattered today. I'm in the middle of making a bunch of Christmas presents and I'm making this uh, this video while they dry. I'm a little scattered today, so my apologies if I seem a bit less than perfectly coherent. It's a thing. The holidays are always stressful. All right, let me show you the review. There. There you go. And the whole reason I left this blank, I have a whole plan for how, remember I told you that I was going to do shadows. I have a whole plan for shadows that come through here to enhance the intended forestness of this. So yeah, there you go. So this is me, Catalyst Echo, saying goodnight. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Just a super quick one on stenciling. Have a great day. Bye.